won't be Christmas without any presents. It's so dreadful to be poor. I don't think it's fair for some girls to have plenty of pretty things, and other girls nothing at all. Well, we do have father and mother. And because we haven't got Father Beth, and she'll not have him for quite a long time still. Mother thinks we ought not to spend money for pleasure, especially when our men are suffering in the army so. We can make our little sacrifices, and we ought to do it gladly. But I'm afraid I don't. Well, I don't think the army would be helped much by us giving up the dollar Aunt March gave us. I agree to expect nothing from Mother or from you, but I do need to buy a new book for myself. I plan to spend mine on new music. I shall get a box of favors drawing pencils. I really need them. I saw a perfectly beautiful hat at the store the other day. Well, I know. Let's each buy what we want. I'm sure we all work hard enough to earn it. I know I do. Teaching those tiresome children all day, and I'm longing to be enjoying myself at home. Well, how would you like to be shut up with a nervous, fussy old lady who always keeps you trotting, is never satisfied, and, and worries you until you're ready to fly out of the window or cry? It's not even correct, but I do think that doing dishes and keeping things tidy is the worst work in the world. It makes my hands so stiff, I can hardly practice. I don't believe any of you suffer as I do, for you don't have to go to school with impertinent girls who plague you if you don't know your lessons, laugh at your dresses, and label your father if he isn't rich. He insult you if your nose isn't nice. If you mean libel, Amy, then say it and not use labels as if Papa was a pickle jar. I know what I mean. At least it's proper to use good words and improve your vocabulary. At least I don't use slang like you. <laughs> don't, Joe, it's so boyish. That's why I do it. I detest rude, unladylike girl, and I hate affected nimity kimity jit. Birds are a little less than three. <laughs> really, girl, you are both to be blamed. You were old enough to leave off boys' tricks, Josephine. It didn't matter so much when you were a little girl, but now that you're so tall and you turn your hair up sometimes, you really should remember that you are a young lady. I am not! And if turning up my hair makes me, makes me one, I will marry two tails until I'm 20. As for you, Amy, you're altogether too particular and prim. Your airs are funny now, but you'll turn into an affected goose if you don't take care. If Joe is a tomboy and Amy is a goose, then what about please? You're a deer, nothing else. Okay, enough of this. Let's go Christmas shopping now before Marmy gets home. Yes, yes, come back, wear your warm hat. I'll wear this one with my white pencil. Peg! <laughs> Girls, I put the packages in this basket right here. Doesn't it look lovely? Well, now that that's done, we need to practice for the Christmas play. I don't see how you can write and act such splendid things, Joe. You're a regular Shakespeare. Yeah. Not quite. I don't mean to act anymore after this point. I'm getting much too old for such things. Well, you won't stop, I know. Not as long as you can trail around in a white gown with your hair down and wear that, that paper gold jewelry. We ought to rehearse tonight. Oh, Amy, do come here. We need to practice that fainting scene. You're stiff as a poker in it. I can't help it. I never saw anyone faint. All right. I'm Hugo the villain, and I've come at you through the doorway with a pistol in my hand. <laughs> I'll come for you, fair maiden. Marry me or die. Look well, frightened at least, Amy. Okay, put your hands up in the air. Oh dear! <laughs> no, the line is Rodrigo, save me! And then you faint. I'll choose to say the line, but I don't choose to make myself black and blue, tumbling flat as you do. But that's how it's done! Okay, watch me. Clasp your hands together so, and then stagger across the room, crying frantically. Rodrigo, save me! Save me! <laughs> Rodrigo, save me! Save me! <laughs> <laughs> Mary, my dears. Meg, how is your cold? It's better. Good. Did anyone call that? Joe, you look tired. Dad, Amy, come kiss me. I have a treat for you girls. A letter 
quick messages for you. It was so splendid for Father to go as a chaplain when he was too old to be drafted. Well, don't I wish I could go as, as a drummer or a nurse so I could be with him and help him. Must be dreadful to have to go and sleep in a tent and eat all sorts of bad-tasting food and drink out of a tin mug. When will he be home, Marty? Not for many months, unless he is sick. He will stay and do his duty faithfully, and we won't ask him back a moment sooner than we can spare him. Now, let me redo the end of his life. Give him all my dear love and a kiss. Tell them I think of them by day, pray for them by night, and find my best comfort in their affections at all times. A year seems a very long time to wait before I see them. But remind them that while we wait, we may all work so that these hard days need not be wasted. I know that they will remember all I said to them, that they will be loving children to you, will do their duty faithfully, fight their bosom enemies bravely, and conquer themselves so beautifully that when I come back to them, I may be fonder and prouder than ever of my little women. I am a selfish girl, but I'll truly try to be better so he may be disappointed in me by and by. We all will. I, I think too much of my looks, and I hate to work. But I won't anymore if I can help it. And, and I'll try to be what he loves to call me best, a little woman. And not be rough and wild, but, but do my duty here instead of always wanting to be somewhere else. Do you remember when you used to play Pilgrim's Progress with girls? <laughs> Nothing delighted you more than for me to take my peace bags and tie them on your backs as burdens. And then I'd give you scarves and hats and, and rolls of paper, and you would travel through the house, starting in the cellar, which was your city of destruction, <laughs> on all the way up until you were on the housetop where you collected all sorts of beautiful things for your city of destruction. I mean, no, celestial city. <laughs> it was beautiful. Oh, that was so much fun. Especially going through the valley of the shadow of death <laughs> and fighting with those hobgoblins. But I liked the part where our burdens fell off our backs and tumbled downstairs. My favorite part was when we go up onto the roof where all the flowers were and sing for joy up there in the sunshine. I liked the cake and milk we had at the top. If we weren't too old, I might like to play it again. You know, this is actually a play you are never too old to play. We play it all the time. Our burdens are here, our road is before us, and God's Word is our guidebook that leads us through many trials. But where are our burdens? Well, you've all just said now what your burdens were. Except for Beth. I rather think she has a penny. <laughs> yes, I have. Mine is dishes and dusters and an enemy girl with nice pianos and being a favorite of people. Do you know what? We were all in the valley of despair just now, and Mother came and pulled us out. <laughs> so we ought to have our role of directions as Christian had. Oh, okay, what shall we do about that? Well, look under your pillows on Christmas morning and you will find your guidebooks. Mm, dinner party, Mark, doesn't it smell simply defined? <laughs> yes, it does. I'm going to go help you with your guidebooks. To think that all this time she was going to get us a present after all. I'm quite ashamed to think of what we've done after reading Papa's letter. I, I don't want Marty to even see these things. Oh, oh. You know, Meg, Marmy's slippers are quite worn out. She must have a new pair. I plan to get her some with my daughter. No, I shall. I'm the oldest, so well, I'm the man of the family now that Papa <laughs> is away. So I shall provide the slippers. I know. Let's each get her something for Christmas and take back the presents we got for ourselves. That's just like you, dear. Okay, what shall we get? I'll get her a nice pair of white gloves. Army shoes, the best to be had. Take your kiss. Oh, 
I shall get her a little bottle of cologne. She likes it, and it doesn't cost much. She'll have money left to buy my pencils. <laughs> All right, well, let's go now before the store closes. Hurry. Mmm, I smell pancakes and muffins, too. Well, perhaps Christmas won't be so dismal after all. <laughs> Girls, Mother wants us to read, love, and mind these Bibles. And we ought to begin right away. I'm going to put mine by my bedside. And I'll read a little bit every morning. For I know it will do me good. And it will help me get through the day. How good Meg is. Come, Amy. I'll help you with the hard work. And they'll explain things if we don't understand. I'm glad mine is blue. Meg, can you pass me those slippers? Here you go. What on earth are you doing? Oh, I'm just getting the stiffness out of them, of course. <laughs> Where is Mother? I heard a noise with her earlier. Maybe she went to run an errand. Do you think she saw the gifts? Well, wait, where's Amy's bottle of cologne? <gasps> There's a noise! Quick, hide the basket! Oh, it's only Amy. <sighs> <laughs> what are you up to, Amy? Don't laugh at me, Joe. I didn't mean for anyone to know until the time came. I just changed a little bottle of cologne for a big one, and I spent all my money to get it, and I'm truly trying not to be selfish anymore. Well, Amy. You are Trump, and I shouldn't think of laughing at all. I'm so glad I did change it. And my present is the handsomest now. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas. Mommy. Merry Christmas. Thank you for our books. We're going to read them every day. Well, breakfast is ready. It smells heavenly. I'm so hungry. Wait a minute. Not far from here lies a poor woman with a brand new baby. She has six children huddled up in one bed, trying to keep warm, but they have no fire. And they have no food. And the oldest son just came to tell me of their suffering. And I was wondering if you girls would be willing to give them your breakfast as a Christmas present. I'm glad you came before we began. May I help carry things to the poor little children? I shall take three. Mm -hmm. And muffins. I knew you would. We'll all get together. We'll all help them. When we get back, we'll have bread and milk for breakfast. But then, we'll make up for it at dinner time. After the Christmas play, Marnie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what an interesting Christmas this was. <laughs> yes. First the home and those poor starving children. They were so funny, lined up like so many hungry birds. That was a very happy breakfast even though we didn't eat any of it. It was fun seeing Christmas carols all the way home. Well, we even caught the neighbor's attention. Mr. Brooke actually came out to speak to us for once. He's so quiet next to Lori. Well, everyone's quiet next to Lori. Mr. Brooke is a perfect gentleman. Implying that Lori isn't. Lori's just a boy. I've heard wonderful things about Mr. Brooke's character. And ever so intelligent besides. Besides being attractive. Mr. Brooks certainly seems to find you so, Meg. He kept staring at you the other day with that, that silly sort of expression. <laughs> Mr. Brooks isn't silly, and if he was staring, it's very improper. <laughs> well, I think that Mother was surprised by her gifts. The gloves fit her perfectly, and, and so did the slippers. And I think she liked your hankies, Beth, even though you embroidered mother on them instead of M. March. She put cologne on it right away, put it in her pocket. She's always asking us every morning when we go out, girls, do you have nice pocket handkerchiefs? <laughs> <laughs> well, I do believe that Marty would ask us all that if we were running away from an earthquake. <laughs> well, I think the play was a success. You painted simply beautifully, Amy. Well, that was all right. But when the tower collapsed, my train got caught in it, and Joe wouldn't stop pulling even for a moment. I told you it wouldn't work. Hey, well, I was the one who was buried beneath all the ruins, and 
if it hadn't been for men going on and dragging us out and pretending like nothing was the matter, the whole play would have been ruined. Well, all the girls in it was perfectly lovely, especially the singing. I think some of them were frightened by the witch, though. Do you think I was too wicked? Men. They were perfectly ghastly. Which was exactly what the part required. And did you believe the rapturous supper Mr. Lawrence sent us afterwards? Ice cream! Actually, two dishes of it, pink and white. Flowers were beautiful. How nice it must be to live in such luxury every day and, and be able to give so much to others. Lori put it into his head. I know he did. Lori's grandfather's kind of anything, thing, Joe. He told me his piano suffers for lack of use. Now that Lori's busy doing other things, and asked what it was I like to practice on it. Oh, that, that's wonderful! Well, you're going. You're going to go, aren't you? Yes. He told me it wouldn't disturb anybody, and then he... He... What, Beth? What dreadful thing did he do? He kissed me on the forehead, and told me I looked like a little girl in one. <laughs> Beth, you must be very strong and brave the lions on the way into the palace beautiful. Is Lori an accomplished boy? Yes. He has had an excellent education, and he has much talent. He will turn into a fine man if he's not spoiled by petting. And he isn't conceited, is he? Not in the least. That's why he's so charming and we all like him so much. I see. It's nice to have, ele or have elegance be accomplished, but not to show off or display. Mm -hmm. Any more than it's proper to wear. You don't want to wear all your bonnets, gowns, and ribbons at once just to show the folks that you've got them. That'd be rather silly, wouldn't it? <sighs> Met. Lori invited us to go to the theater with him this afternoon. And Mr. Brooks is coming to What? We hardly have any time to get ready. Here, I'll help you. Where are you going? None of your business. Little girls shouldn't ask questions. You tell me. I should think you might let me go too. I'm so lonely and I haven't got anything to do. You can't, dear, because you weren't invited. You're going somewhere with Lord. I know you are. You were talking and whispering together yesterday. Aren't you going with him? Yes, we are. Now be still and stop bothering. I know. I know you're going to the theater to see the Seven Castles. And I shall go too, for Mommy said I might see it, and I've got my rag money, and it was mean of you not to tell me in time. Just listen to it and be a good child. You can go next week with, with Beth and Hannah and, and have a nice time. I don't like that half as well as going with you and Lori. Please let me go. I'm dying for some fun. Do, ma'am. I'll be ever so good. Suppose we do. If she goes, then I shan't. And if I don't go, Lori won't like it. And it would be very rude after he invited only us to go and drag in Amy. I shall go, for Meg says I might. And if I pay for myself, Lori hasn't anything to do with it. Well, you can't sit with us, for our seats are reserved. And you can't sit alone. So then Lori will give you his place, and that will spoil our pleasure. You shan't stir a step, Amy March. So you may just stay where you are. You'll be sorry for this, Joe March! See if you ain't! Fiddlesticks! <laughs> Fond of and, and worked over and 
meant to finish before Father came? You haven't really burnt it, have you? I did. I told you I would make you pay for being so cross yesterday, and I dare you, wicked, wicked girl. I can never burn it all again, and I shall never forgive you as long as I live. Ugh. Whatever is the matter? Amy burnt Joe's book for not letting her go to the theater yesterday, and Joe slapped Amy. What shall we do? Amy, are you alright? Look, perhaps Joe was wrong for how she treated you yesterday, but that is no reason for you to retaliate so harshly. Listen, she has been working on that little book for years. She was nearly finished. She, she hasn't any other copy. She was hoping to finish it. She put her heart and her soul into that book. Can't you see why she would be so upset? Yes. And I was sorry the minute the fire was over, but I didn't know what to say. You must say the only thing you can say when you have done something dreadful. I'm sorry. She never said she was sorry to me. You must be the peacemaker first. And I think you're wrong was the word. Aren't you going to say something to Joe? Yes. But perhaps not now when words would be wasted. But Amy, give her a bit, and then you must speak to her. Go smart. Please forgive me, Joe. I'm very, very sorry. I shall never forgive you, Amy. Don't let the sun go down on your anger, Joe. Forgive her. Help each other. You can begin again tomorrow. But it was an abominable thing that she did, and she doesn't deserve to be forgiven. Are you seeing Joe or Amy? Have they made up yet? Joe is skating with Lori. I'm afraid she hasn't said anything to Amy yet. Yes, but I sent Amy along after them. I'm sure that Joe will get in under Lori's influence. I hope so. I think the book is going to be I wrote him a letter of thanks. And Lori had been struggling under his desk early this morning. I'm sure he was delighted. They looked lovely. But he hasn't acknowledged them yet. Do you think that might be benefit? No, I wouldn't worry, dear. I'm sure he thought them simply elegant. He is a busy man. I'm going to give the man some exercise, Mommy. I'll be back soon. Meg? You've told me numerous times what a lovely time you had at the Muppets, but you seem to be worried about something as well. Is there... Is there anything you'd like to tell me? Yes. Harmony, I need to confess. I did some dreadful things at the Moffats. I told you that they dressed me up, but I didn't tell you that they powdered and squeezed and frizzled and made me look like a fashion plate. One man called me a doll. I knew it was silly, but they flattered me and called me a beauty and all conscious of nonsense. And I let them make a fool of me. Is that all? No. I drank champagne and I, I romped and tried to flirt and it was altogether horrible. There's something else. I heard some of the ladies talking about us. They said that you had laid your plan, and that we were only kind to Lori because he was rich, and one of us might marry him by and by. Well, I was very unwise to send you among people whom I hardly know. They're kind, I dare say, but worldly and ill-bred. I know it's silly, but... It's nice to be praised and admired. And I can't help but say that I like it. Well, that is natural. And it's harmless, so long as the liking doesn't become a passion that leads you to do foolish or unmaidenly things. 
but I want you to value the praise that is worth having from being modest as well as pretty. Do you have plans, as Mrs. Moffat said? Yes, I do. I think all mothers have plans for their daughters. I want you to be beautiful and accomplished and good. I want you to be loved and admired and respected. I want you to have a joyful youth and then one day to be well and wisely married. And I want you to live a good and pleasant life with as very little care and sorrow as God sees fit to send to try you. So I shouldn't think of marriage at all yet? It's natural to think of it. And it's good to hope for it. In fact, it's wise to prepare for it. But Meg, I would rather see you married to a poor man and be happy than to be some rich queen on a throne with no self-respect or peace. Oh, Amy, you're fine. Right. Oh, 
that, that's an honor to be proud of because he keeps all of her little things carefully. <laughs> See, that's what comes from having big blue eyes and loving music. <laughs> you ought to go and thank him. Yes, I need to. I guess I'll better go now before I get too frightened thinking about it. That's the queerest thing I ever saw. That piano has turned her head. She never would have gone in her right mind. <laughs> I do believe the world is coming to an end. No, but it's not. It's just that you girls are working so hard on overcoming your burdens. Meg, I remember when your hands were white and smooth and your greatest care in the world was keeping them so. But look, you have a burn and you have blisters on your palms. A burnt offering has been made of your vanity. <laughs> and I treasure skills that make a home happy more than white hands. <laughs> there you are, Beth. What happened? Well, I went up to thank him, but I couldn't think of what to say. And he looked so kind and friendly underneath his big eyebrows. I just kissed him on the cheek instead. <laughs> I think he liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Beth, I'm so proud of you for thinking of his feelings more than your own. I'm so proud of my little girls. Well, Marmy, what about Amy's burdens? Well, Amy, I noticed that she took the chicken leg at dinner, even though we all know she prefers the white meat. And she doesn't fret so much and look in the glass. And I believe that she is forming her character just as diligently as she forms those little clay figures that she works with. And Joe? Well, Joe is learning to mind her temper and forgive even when it's very difficult, Amy. <laughs> I'm so proud of my girls for working so hard, overcome your weaknesses, and even being rewarded for it sometimes. Just like when the Pilgrims made it to the Celestial City. Yes, just like that. And one day, my little Pilgrims, when we reach our Celestial City, we will receive our true reward.